Welcome to another video here by Howard Piano Industries. Um, today we're going to be uh, showing you an actual demonstration of uh, doing a pitch raise on a piano that's um, below pitch uh, much further than it, than it normally would be, um, enough that it needs to have a pitch raise done on it. So uh, we're going to show you because I've had a lot of uh, questions from some of our viewers that um, you know, wanted, wanted more details on, on how to do a pitch raise and, on, and more details on doing pitch raises. So um, we're going to go through and um, do, a, do an entire pitch raise on the piano and show you what, what we do step by step. Um, and then at the end, you know, when, once I go, I've gone through and, and finished the pitch raise, you, we can see what our results are and how close we are to being at pitch um, you know, following the, the method that I'm going to show you, what the, the method that I usually use um, in performing a pitch raise on a piano. This is a Story and Clark Spinet piano um, that we're, doing, uh, we're using today for a demonstration. Um, now what I usually do first, here we've got in front of you the um, uh, Tune Lab uh, for the iPad, um, which is what I usually use for tuning. Um, you know, this, so we're going to be demonstrating and using Tune Lab. There's other um, tuning software out there as well, but uh, this is just happens to be the one that I use. So we're going to show you how it works. Um, uh, first thing I do is, uh, you know, when I first check piano, I check to see what the how close we are to pitch. Okay, and I won't check every single note, but what I'll do is I'll check a range of notes. Um, you know, as you, Usually what I do is we start at uh, A4, which is the A above middle C, and uh, see where we're at from there. As we can see, we're about um, uh, 13 to 15 cents uh, flat. And what I'll do, I'll usually go down by minor thirds, or three half steps up and down from where I'm, you know, from where I'm at, um, because that's the, the most that we can play a note further away from where we're at and the Tune Lab will change the pitch on the screen automatically. So I'll go to F sharp 4 and there are about 16 cents flat. D sharp 4 that's about 10 or 11. Uh, C4 is 14 cents flat. A3 is about 13. F sharp three is about um, ten, and so forth. Okay, so it's it's fairly consistent. What I'll do is I'll go up uh, from a four two. Okay, as, as we can see, I mean, some aren't quite as bad as others, but for the most part, we're in the, um, you know, I would say on average, it's about 15, 15 cents flat um, you know, for, for that range of notes that I covered, which, which was, uh, you know, majority of the, of the piano. So, um, so, and that, that is enough from pitch that, uh, that we would want to do a pitch raise if we, if we wanted to tune the piano um, at the standard A440. Um, pitch. So we're going to do a we're going to do a pitch raise on the piano. Um, the next thing that um, we would do is uh, we would go um, now. If I don't have a um, a tuning saved for this for the piano that I'm working on already, if it's you know if it's a piano that I've tuned all in the past, you know then I'll have um, a, um, a stretch a custom stretch already calculated for it. Um, and so and, and we talk about how to how to get do that in, in other videos but um, what I'll usually do is you just use an average because if I do a custom stretch on a on a piano that's not at pitch or close to pitch um, it's not going to be as accurate as if I do the custom uh, stretch measurements um, you know with it at with it close to pitch or at pitch so so what I'll do is you just use an average or maybe I'll pull up a, a st custom stretch for a piano that's a similar size maybe the same model um, but a similar s scale piano that uh, that I'll use but uh, for today we're just going to use the average um, average stretch you know so this is a fairly common 
uh, stretch. So we'll we'll use that. You know, it won't be as accurate, but again, we're just doing a pitch raise, so it doesn't have to be super accurate at, at this point. So um, it'll get us in the ballpark, anyways. So uh, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go in my settings down here, and go into over pull. Okay, over pull is the another word for um, pitch raise. And here we've got, uh, it says pre-measuring and start. Okay, so we're going to push that. Pre-measuring is, what is what it does is we go through, and I've got this, um, the pre-measure um, sequence to do every C, E, and G uh, from the bottom all the way to the top. Okay, and we can ch you can change that if you want. You can do it so you measure every every note or every white note, I think it is, or even every note if you wanted to, but um, there's really not... I need to do that, uh, measure that many notes when you're um, calculating the over pull for the for the stretch. Now, um, let me I can explain what that means when you're when I was, we're calculating the over pull. Uh, what that means is um, when when you do an over pull, which is actually pulling the pitch above where it's going to be um, in order to um, have it end up where where we want it to be because what happens is as you adjust pitch a large amount like 15 or 20 cents like we've got on this piano or more sometimes um, if you just pulled it up to pitch where it where you want it to end up by the time you're done it's going to end up flat because um, you're putting all that extra tension on the strings um, which will which will pull the other strings that you've already tuned uh, back out of pitch some not it won't pull it all the way back to where it was, but it'll it'll pull it back down some. So um, here we've got um, uh, it's general it's generally um, about twenty five percent, and again it's gonna it's gonna vary as far as the percentage over pull from one section of the piano to another, and that's um, figured into the software already. So um, we we leave this over pull factor. At one point zero, okay, and that's um, that's a standard. So if if you if you're having trouble getting it to end up where you want it to be, double check your overpull factor. Um, the other thing is you have over overpull limits. It says limit overpull for plain strings to thirty cents. Okay, so you don't want it to um, you don't want to go like if say for example the you're pulling it um, you're doing the overpull twenty five percent. If you um, if the piano is say two hundred cents flat, it's going to over pull at fifty cents, which is um, you know not the best thing to, to over pull it that much. So so they have those limits so that uh, you don't go um, you know too much over pitch than than where, what you really want it to be. So um, so we've got those limits, and then for the wound strings, they have the over pull limit to twenty cents. That's uh, to help somewhat uh, <clears throat> keep from breaking strings. Um, the other thing we want to do is um, edit where the um, the bass bridge and wound strings end. Okay, so um, the bass bridge here is is um, you, you, there's going to be this separation in the section between the bass hammers and the rest of the piano. Okay, so whatever note goes up to the top of that Base section is um, is what we saw base bridge. So that's going to be E3 on this piano. Um, we can go in here and you can change that. And just kind of scroll that around, and then the select the highest wound string. This one has uh, two two notes, two wound string notes on the on the uh, tenor section. So where that's up to F sharp three is the is the highest wound string. So that we want to make sure that that's set there because that's that'll calculate or help calculate uh, the over pull correctly. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is do the pre-measure. Okay, so I'm going to hit start, and it's going to say, now uh, play C1. Oh, because I was talking it. Uh, let me go back and try that again. I'll try not to talk this time. Oh. Over pull, start.
Okay, so what um, uh, what uh, what you might have noticed, and I didn't talk while I was doing that because it would mess up my uh, my measurements. Um, so, but you might have noticed it showed for each note, and you can go back and watch that section of the video again if you want. But it showed the amount that uh, the the that note was flat or sharp. Some of them at this hop at the top end were actually sharp. Um, so, um, and that might have been because when this piano was tuned, it, it might have been stretched a little more in the treble section, which um, it might end up being that way again anyways, but um, at least this will get us close. Um, so, so we went, now we've gone through and done the pre-measurement, and uh, again, you could see, you know, if you, if you go back and watch uh, as I did the pre-measurement, you can see how much the, um, the note was sharp or flat, and most of them were flat. Uh, the other thing you could see on there was it, sh it said play such and such a note, um, and uh, so so then you know if it doesn't switch after you play the note, it means it didn't hear it. So I have you, if you noticed a couple of them, I had to I had to play again because it didn't register uh, the pitch. Okay, so now we're going to go through and uh, do the actual actual pitch raise. Okay, so. So we're going to start down here on um, A0, the, lo the lowest A. And we can see the... the um... Now what I do is um, I usually um, will, if I'm going to err on our sharper flat, what I'll usually do is most of the notes will be just a, just a little bit on the sharp side. Um, you know, I try to get it close, but um, if I'm going to be sharp or flat one or the other, I'd rather be a little sharp than a little flat because when I go to um, fine-tune it, uh, it's easier to just tap the pitch down a little bit rather than try to pull it pull it up. So, so that's, that's one thing that I usually do is um, I usually uh, pull the pitch just, just a slight amount above where it should be. notice um, that I don't, I'm not using any mutes. Um, that's because when I'm, when it's that far from pitch, you know, I don't necessarily try to get all the unisons perfect, but I, but I, but what, because on the screen of Tune Lab, we can see um, different peaks for the different notes. So if there's two strings per note or three strings per note, you know, I'm focusing on the one that's moving as I'm trying to um, trying to move the pitch. So now we're in the, the section where there's two notes or two strings per note.
Okay, so now we've gotten to the end of the of the base section, and uh, we're going to be moving on to the next. We've got a couple more um, notes that have two strings per note, uh, but the same thing when I get when we get to the three strings per note, you'll notice. Um, you know, I'll do all three strings without any mutes, just um, just getting it. Um, you know, close to where it should be. So if you're noticing, you know, as you can see, I'm probably I'm getting most of the most of the strings, um, you know, ab ab or most of the notes above pitch a little bit. Move us over here a little bit so we can see on the next section. But uh, here we'll move on and continue on with the next section here. <laughs> One thing um, I want should mention is, um, uh, you know, obviously I don't have to do any pitch changing on the on the screen uh, because um, TuneLab automatically hears the next note and changes the pitch on the screen automatically. But um, what you're gonna what you're gonna find is some pianos are gonna be more than fifty cents flat. I mean, it could be sharp, but usually it's not that sharp. But if it's if it's more than fifty cents from pitch. For example, say um, say say the notes overall were seventy five cents flat on the average. Um, what you're what you're going to have trouble then with, and, and uh, the way that I handle this is specifically is um, because the note won't change automatically, and as you pull up one one of the pitches, say for example you go to A, or whatever note that you're you're tuning, and um, you uh, start to pull up the note, it might switch, but it's going to be switching back and forth because it's going to be hearing two different notes. Okay, so what I do then is, um, uh, for example, say we're on B3. Okay, and um, what I'm going to do is there's a setting in over pull, I'm sorry, on over note, auto note switching. What I'll do is do just the auto up, okay? And what it's going to do then is because most of them I can play actually a step, a half step higher than um, where I, the note I'm trying to tune to get the note to switch. And because I'm doing auto up, it's going to it's going to go up to the next that note what that it hears. For example, if I'm if I'm going to tune B three. Um, and, and for example, the screen is showing A sharp three because that was the last one I did. And I'm going to go up to B three. Here we'll go up to A sharp three, and I'm going to. Uh, um, it's on A sharp three, and I want to go up to B three. Uh, if I play B three, it's close. That's and it's seventy five cents flat. It's actually going to be closer to A sharp three than it is to B three, if that makes sense, because it's a um, hundred cents would be a half step. Okay, so if it was 100 cents, cents flat, it would be exactly at A sharp 3, wherever that is. So um, uh, what I do then, again, I set it to auto up, and instead of playing B3, I'll hit C3 really quick just to get the note to switch. Okay, for example, I would play, um, I would play B3, but I would play C3 to get it to switch up, and then I would go down and tune uh, the B3. Okay, so that's if it's, you know, quite a bit uh, more than 50 cents flat. Uh, that's the method that I do use to um, to get it to, um, you know, to switch notes so I don't have to keep tapping the screen. You can keep tapping the screen, but make sure you turn that auto note switching off or switch it to auto up only because um, otherwise it's going to be just jumping back and forth on you all the time. And so that's the kind of how I got worked around that um, that little issue that uh, you come across when a piano is a lot out of tune. So we'll continue on here. Oh, I got to switch back to auto both. There we go. For the three string notes, um, it's a little bit harder to see the peaks if it's not like 
way flat. You know, if it's like in this section, it looks like it's a maybe about 10 cents flat. So it's a little harder to see the peaks. So you do get to where you use your ear. Um, you know, one, you pull the first one up by watching the peaks. Um, and then the second one, you'll, uh, the second string, the middle string, you'll, you'll go through and, uh, you know, you can kind of hear when you're, when you're getting close to the one you've already tuned. Okay, let me show you on the G sharp three here. Unisons on that are, are not um, anywhere close to where they should be, but at least the three strings are in the ballpark of where. So again, we're not worrying about getting our unisons perfect or anything, but we're getting them in the ballpark so that when we go to fine tune it, um, we're not gonna. It's not gonna go way flat on us. <laughs> Okay, so we've reached the end of um, the first, or I'm sorry, the middle section, um, and now all we have left is the is the treble section that um, that we're going to be doing here. So we'll now we're going to do the top section here. Uh, moving on to the. Um,
other thing I wanted to mention too while we're going along here, you might see this over pull offset. Okay, and it'll this like here it says 3.9 cents for C sharp six. That's the amount of the number of cents that it's actually pulling um, the the pitch above where it should be when it when it ends up. Okay, so as if you go back and look at um, the notes you've already tuned and look where what that over pull offset is, you can see um, how many cents uh, the the pitch is being pulled above above. Um, concert pitch or where, where, where we want to end up when it's done. These are all pretty close, so... Yeah, the top, the top couple were, were quite a bit sharp, so, but... But anyway, so, so that's the, um... And then we go through and stop it. So, um, what we've done, what I've gone through is, um... Uh, gone through and, um... There we go, sorry. So I've um, gone through and done the pitch raise. Now we're going to go back and double check, you know, how things turned out. Okay, so we're going to go back here to the middle of the piano. Uh, we're going to start by checking A4. As you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty close. I don't remember, you know, what A4 over pull was, um, you know, when we got to that, um, but, you know, it might have pulled it over, over pulled it, you know, four cents. Again, that over pull amount is going to depend on how far from pitch. So, so say your, say your piano is a hundred cents flat, it's going to over pull it, say like by twenty five cents, um, you know, because I, like I said, on the average, it's about twenty five percent over pull. Uh, depending on what section of the piano it is, it's um, doing. But uh, you know, so you're going to have sometimes have a lot more overpull, and there, you know, the further you are from pitch, you know, the less likely you are you're going to end up, you know, real close to where you want it to be. I mean, it's it's going to it's going to be do pretty good job, but um, you know, there's there's more room for error in there when um, you know when you're pulling it up that much. Um, that far from pitch. So, so we're going to check A4. Uh, I'm going to go down and check F sharp 4. 
It's still a little sharp, but it, it's you know it's close enough that we should be able to still get pretty good results. So most most of them are you know are are fairly close, just a little bit. You know, there's a couple of them that were maybe eight or nine cents sharp at the most, um, you know, but uh, as you can see, most of them are going to be pretty close. And, and like I said, I, if I was going to err on sharp or flat, I would, I would tend to err a little on the sharp side. So as you can see, most of them are going to be just a little bit sharp um, or or close to pitch to where they should be. Um, and that's, you know, that's where I like it to end up when I go to go to fine tune it after a pitch raise. So, so that's the process of uh, doing a pitch raise on a piano. We've gone through, it's a lot of, uh, um, you know, a lot of information, but, uh, you know, hopefully that's helpful for you. And feel free to visit our website. We've got a lot of videos on piano tuning and repair and regulating. Um, our website is howardpianoindustries.com.